All right, gather around, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I want to talk about why Adobe really needs to fix their their their, their sh especially when it comes to their editing software. So let's get started. Now, the subject of this video isn't something that I sought out to make. It's actually something that happened to me that I figured was worth talking about because I generally don't use any of Adobe's editing software. I'll use Lightroom, Photoshop, Illustrator, and occasionally InDesign for still image work. But for video editing, most of my work is done in Final Cut Pro on my Mac or LumaFusion on my iPad. I do not use any of Adobe's editing tools unless I absolutely have to, or if I'm doing testing on products to show the performance. However, I did a video recently talking about the old iMac G4, and there was an animation that I wanted to do that I figured would be perfect for After Effects. And because I hadn't used After Effects in a while, I figured, well, it's been updated, and obviously Adobe's been optimizing it for the M1 platform, whether it be the M1 Pro, Max, Standard M1, or the Ultra. So I'll do that because the vision I have in my head for this animation would most likely benefit from being done in a tool built for the ground up to do this. The animation in question is this one here. It's pretty basic, but overall I figured that with keyframing, the moving background, things like that, it might be better to just do it in After Effects. It's made for this kind of stuff. And boy, did I ever go on an adventure. So when I downloaded and opened it, it was pretty standard. I hadn't used it in a while, so I did have to kind of refresh myself on some of the tools, but I began to work on it as you normally would. And it took the background just fine. It's actually a pre-rendered background, so even easier. And then I began to sort of play around with some of the animations after dropping a few items in, mainly these PNGs. But once I actually started adding these PNGs to the timeline and animating them, it started slowing down. And I figured, well, that doesn't seem quite right because generally I can play back unrendered footage in Motion, which is Apple's version of After Effects, or Final Cut itself without needing to pre-render it. I can just play the unrendered footage, no problem. And that's footage in those tools. This is just a set of images. But it didn't want to, so I figured, okay, I'll just render it out and let it do its thing. Once it finished rendering, I started the animation process of moving things around, putting keyframes in, and then I dropped in the transition point, which is these little green screen smoke effects. And it crashed, like, immediately. There was no hesitation. It just said, green screen, nope, done. And, uh, well, that kind of sucked because I hadn't saved. And unbeknownst to me, After Effects has an autosave tool. So there we go, problem solved. So with that in mind, I opened it back up and everything was corrupted literally everything. It wouldn't open properly. And because at this point I had spent time importing the PNG files, creating the base timeline, and then having to render that base timeline, I was in at about 10 minutes. Not a ton of time wasted, but that 10 minutes will become more apparent as to why it pissed me off in just a minute. So me being me, I tried to do it again and it crashed again sooner this time. Basically, as soon as I dragged in a PNG file, crashed, and then the whole thing was corrupted again. Two times it corrupted files, even though it was auto-saving them, fully corrupted, couldn't reopen them, had to start from scratch. I was livid at this point because I had an image in my head and with the hyper-focus that I tend to get when I'm editing, I wanted this animation done. And knowing that for some reason I could not get it done in After Effects after sinking 20 minutes into two separate projects to complete the same goal, I figured, screw it, I'm gonna do it somewhere else. And that somewhere else was literally right on the timeline in Final Cut. And the reason why that 10 minutes in After Effects to get up to the point where it corrupted the file pissed me off so much is because I created this entire animation with keyframing, transitions, green screen elements, and PNGs with a moving background in a total of 10 minutes on the bare timeline of Final Cut Pro. Now, I'm not saying Final Cut Pro is the end-all be-all editor. I know that it's lacking a lot of things. Hell, I've had to download plugins to get things back that I used to use when I edited in Premiere exclusively. But at this point, I am fully into Final Cut, and the only times that I use any Adobe tools are when I'm transitioning something from an animation tool to video and back into Final Cut. That's literally all I have it for, creating animations, and it can't even do that properly without corrupting the entire 
f***ing file. Now, I mentioned my experience to somebody I know who used to almost exclusively do their editing in Adobe Premiere, and they said two things to me. Number one, well, it's an Adobe product, and especially after an update, that's just how it is. And that kind of rubs me the wrong way, because if you want to claim that you're the industry standard as a video editor, maybe, just maybe, you should make a software that can crash in a way that it won't corrupt everything. Even if you're autosaving, maybe you should make a program that can elegantly crash without corrupting minutes in my case, or hours in some other people's cases of work. Just saying, or maybe just make a program that doesn't crash. I don't even remember the last time tools like Final Cut or Compressor or Motion even crashed for me. So maybe make a program that doesn't crash or Make a program that crashes in a way that it's not gonna corrupt hours of work for some people. Just a thought. The second thing they mentioned to me was that they've been looking more at doing their work in DaVinci Resolve by Blackmagic because it, at this point, is significantly more optimized on a lot more platforms. And that made me realize that Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects might not be the end all be all for editors on multiple platforms. I mean, sure, on the Mac, it really hasn't been the end-all be-all for a while with options like iMovie for basic editing, Final Cut Pro for more advanced editing, and tools like Motion if you wanna make, well, motion graphics. So on the Mac, there have been a lot of other options. And funnily enough, you would think that the Mac would be easier to optimize for considering that Apple has such a limited lineup, but no, apparently between PC and Mac, Adobe in general is equally unoptimized. Even with them optimizing for the new M chip, there are still a lot of poorly optimized problems. But when it comes to Windows, they were pretty much the end all be all for quite a while. You had things like Sony Vegas, which was okay, but really didn't have some of the features that Adobe Premiere offered. And God knows Windows Movie Maker wasn't getting you anywhere, but you did have Adobe Premiere. And for more advanced editing and special effects, you had After Effects. But now, DaVinci Resolve is kinda kicking ass. When I experienced this issue, I kinda figured that maybe it was because Adobe thought that they were the end-all be-all, that they didn't really have to optimize. And unfortunately, I do kinda feel like that is the mentality, even though just a cursory glance around to make this little rant video, I realized that there were a ton of other options out there on the market for every tool that Adobe makes, except for maybe, maybe Media Encoder. But even then, you have Compressor if you're on a Mac and Handbrake if you're on a PC. So yeah, literally everything has an alternative. Even on something like the iPad, we have alternatives for Adobe tools, which blows my mind. Like years ago, we were promised a full version of Photoshop on the iPad, and we barely have the minimum that's expected from a photo editor on the iPad in Photoshop. However, tools like Affinity Photo are blowing it out of the water. And even tools like Lightroom that are better in a lot of ways than they used to be have better alternatives. Even the Photos app gives you fairly in-depth editing tools if you don't wanna spend a monthly fee to have a basic photo editor on your iPad. And they even tried Adobe Premiere Rush, which lacks so many editing features that it's basically buried by LumaFusion. Overall, I just, I had to make this video to get this off my chest. Adobe needs to get their shit together because at this point, they are no longer the only game in town for PCs. They have never been the only game in town for the iPad, and they've also really never been the only game in town for a Mac. So even though they are the industry standard, eventually professionals are gonna realize that there are better tools out there, and a lot of them already have. There's an entire corridor video, it's a podcast, I believe, where they talked about issues with the Adobe Suite. Why am I paying monthly for a tool that doesn't get updated in a way that makes it seem like my money's going somewhere? Either way, I just had to get this off my chest. Sorry for ranting. Adobe, get your shit together, or PC users are gonna move to something like DaVinci Resolve, I'm already exclusively using Final Cut. And honestly, if being able to put together an entire basic animation in Final Cut with no crashes on the raw timeline in 10 minutes doesn't speak to how there are other alternatives, I don't know what will. So get your shit together or people are gonna start walking. Short video today, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.